Ready to go. So what are we doing this morning? Go do our workout. Pile in the van. If you do time, you have nothing else to do. So most mornings we do exercise. Hey, let's go. They will be smoked by the end of this. <laughs> Everybody line up. When Glenn runs the workout, he likes to tell us we're going to be smoked. No pain, no gain. If you ain't sore the next day after you work out, you ain't doing something right. Glenn, he wants to make everybody hurt <laughs> and sweat. <laughs> Yeah, and he goes that extra mile during the workout. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't gonna be over the walk tomorrow. Yeah. I'm running the workout. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Stretching out. At the gym, there's this picture of my oldest daughter on the back wall. Number 15. I get to see her every day when I come to work out. When was the last time you saw her in person? 2013. Every lap I take, I, I, when I'm passing, I crane my neck <laughs> looking at her. I'm ready to go smoke a cigarette after it worked. Yeah. Yeah. Both of you have been out of your kids' lives quite a bit. Yeah. It's been due to our active addiction on the streets and jail time in here. I have four kids, three girls and one boy. I have a boy and a girl. I took care of my kids. They didn't want for nothing. I didn't get high around them. I, I was a functioning addict because, you know, I kept money, kept things, so I thought I was okay. But DCS, they still took my kids. I miss my kids, you know. I, I love them. I, I haven't seen them in a long time. I hope whenever I fix myself that the adopted parent of my children, he'll maybe let me see them, you know. Um, who was the foster parent to your kids and he adopted them. Mm -hmm. He said yes, okay. then he called me back. And he said that he talked to the kids. And the kids said that they were embarrassed and they didn't want anybody to know anything about their father. Well, I mean, that's pretty hardcore, you know, but I mean, I don't blame him for being embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for it, you know. I was just hoping that one day maybe they would want to see me and, you know, I mean, at least they still remember. That's good. I didn't even think they remembered, you know, because they were so young. But, so that makes me happy, I guess. At least they still remember me. But, you know. It just, it was hard to take a little bit. I'm almost 40 now. Um, I just, I'm just done with it, dude. Like, uh, you know, I'm tired of living that kind of way. I'm tired of living most of my years of life in jail. So uh, I'm just over it. 
John. Wake up. <laughs> well, it's time for me to pack. Today I'm going to be released from jail to a sober living house. So I'm super excited about it. Well, I ain't got much, but I'm going to pack up what I got and take it to the house. It's Sarah's, so I got to give it to her. This is Sarah. This is my girlfriend, the one I love. This weekend, I'll get to spend visit time with her at the sober living house. So I'll get to spend the whole day with her, and that's going to be totally awesome because I miss her. Oh, yeah, I got to get this stuff up here, too. What about your dirty clothes? Yeah. I'm glad he's getting to go, but I still hate watching him leave. I know. I hate to leave you, but... Oh, man. I was in here. I was in this exact cell when my mother passed away. She passed away from drug use. I was in this cell when my sister passed away. My sister shot up just like we did, so that's ultimately what took her life. We were all close. We're all close in age. Same mother, same dad. You know, we. We were really close, so losing my sister, it was hard. Last year, John had also gotten into a horrific car accident. And I didn't know if he was okay then either, so I thought I was losing my whole family then. It was really tough on me. I think that's it. Come grab your slip. I love you. I love you too. You're gonna be all right, I promise. Well, I know. I'll see you soon as I can, okay? Okay. And I'll send you whatever I can. All right. I love you, Joey. I love you too. <sighs> Set a good example <laughs> for you, big guy. Ow! <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Throat punched me. <laughs> That's some, just some love, so you remember me at the house. Uh, I love you. Here, hug me one more time. I love you. I love you too, Joey. I love you. <laughs> All right, I got to get away from John because <laughs> he's making me cry. Time to go, boys. Stop, John. <laughs> I love you. Now that I've lost my man, my sister, I'm still taking it hard because he's my brother and I love him. You know, I hate leaving him. That's pretty hardcore. I remember it's John. It's hard even talking about it. I feel like I just got back with him, so it's hard leaving him. You know? I miss him more than anything. It's my brother. I love him. Both Joey and John are in jail for not only drug related issues but they themselves have crazy drug-related addictions. That cell that they're all living in together is part of a program inside the Cock County Jail that's trying to help these guys get off drugs. It's called J-CAP. How many guys were raised in Cock County? How many of us in here have had family who've walked the same walk we walked, addiction, incarceration, whether it be here or anywhere else? How many guys in here have an addiction problem? How many guys in here have overdosed more than one time? Yeah, yeah. Guys, that speaks volumes. The sheriff implemented that program. They're proud of the program, and there's some really wonderful people there who show up and try to make a difference. But what I'm gonna tell you is, it's not enough. When you watch the installment that we just looked at with the gym workout, I'm not gonna point out the ones, but 
a bunch of those guys have either ended up getting back into trouble or either back in the county jail again, getting back on drugs. Some of the guys, they've caught cases while they were in the jail. So imagine you got a guy that's trying to get sober. He catches the case from something that he did a year ago because the county so backlogged with charging them, they catch more time and then they act out. Again, the problem, the cycle continues. That's what's happening in Cock County. Watching John and Joey have to separate from one another. Like, can you imagine two brothers? They want to love each other so much. They almost rather stay incarcerated together than being separated. Like, holy f Like, that's a crazy story. They've spent so much time together that they want to stick together. Watching him say goodbye, like, I'm not a real emotional guy. That made me pretty sad. That one was a big moment. I could feel the love. You could see how other guys were gonna take care of each other. Like, that's how much they know each other. That's how much this isn't like that, you know, super crazy, let's fight each other jail system. It's like, literally, this is their community. They have to take care of one another. I thought that that was wild. They're off the drugs, they're trying to stay straight, but knowing how many times they've been incarcerated together really makes you wonder, will they be able to walk on a path to where they don't end up in trouble again.